Singing and songwriting talent is not the only talent in Nashville this week. We have the best players in college basketball on the main stage in Bridgestone Arena. How about a top five projected pick in Shakira Austin? She'll be battling against the SEC Player of the Year, the front runner for the National Player of the Year, Aaliyah Boston. It's South Carolina, it's Ole Miss, it's the SEC Tournament Semifinals. Here in the Music City, the bright lights shine on the SEC, but only one team can rock and roll and take a victory lap down Broadway. For the first time in 29 years, Ole Miss will play in the semifinal round. South Carolina making their ninth trip to the semifinals. Legends have conquered this conference, but to win in this league, it's what's on the inside that makes the difference. Austin, tough drive. Boston, oh, quick off the bounce. It takes resiliency within to win in March. Who will come up clutch on the inside and sit atop the throne of the SEC? Time to plug in. We welcome you to ESPN's Champ Week, presented by Principal Financial Group. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. The number one team in the nation is about to take center stage in Nashville. South Carolina has only lost one game this season. They will be challenged by the Ole Miss Rebels in the semifinal of the SEC tournament. Winner is moving on. Here's how we got here. We had some amazing quarterfinals yesterday. South Carolina defeated Arkansas. Ole Miss defeated Florida. Our second semifinal today, that'll be Kentucky and Tennessee. A border battle coming up later tonight. Let's go, Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck, Steffi Sorensen on the sidelines for us tonight. And you look at these two teams, one program in South Carolina, they're used to being here. They're used to playing in the finals of this tournament. Ole Miss, it's been a minute since they've been here. It's gonna be interesting to see how these two teams really handle that. The old and the new, a great battle between two good friends. The SEC Tournament semifinals taking the main stage in Nashville, Tennessee today. Number one, South Carolina taking on Ole Miss. Look, when Charles Dickens wrote A Tale of Two Cities, I don't think he had dominant post players in mind, but that's what we've got in Aaliyah Boston and Shakira Austin. And both of these players carry big bags. They've got a lot of tricks inside. They bring it on the offensive end from both in the paint and a face-up game. You're gonna see these players get on the glass. They're gonna will and do, make their moves and really go against at times double teams. They bring the tenacity on the offensive end, on the defensive end. We're in for a treat for these two team, two players to clash. A tale of two cities indeed, Austin against Boston. Both of these players with double doubles yesterday. We have a little char Charles Dickens, Steffi. How about a little Drake? Started from the bottom, now we're here. That's the story of Ole Miss. Yeah, look, it's been a swift turnaround, Courtney. I love the Drake reference. I've got no match for that, honestly. So I'm going to keep it rolling. Listen, Coach Joe said it has, has come at a price, this turnaround. She had some really dark days wondering if she was the right person for this job, for this turnaround. She relied on her family, her faith, and her inner circle to really stay the course. But look, Ole Miss, they've arrived. And they are in this to believe. And, and Coach Joe got them to believe. That's been the biggest thing, a self-described players coach. Her main task has been get, to get the players to believe and then some and with that confidence every player taking the Fortnite has that no ceilings mentality and it's hard to believe Steffi two seasons ago Ole Miss went 0 and 16 in SEC play it's a familiar matchup it happened just about six days ago it was on Sunday these two teams last met uh, they have played each other twice in the last 38 days and both coaches talked about the improvement of Ole Miss from the first matchup to the second. And Coach Joe talked about, or Dawn Staley talked about how difficult it was to execute her offense against this Ole Miss defense. Zaya Cook will elevate for South Carolina and her shot is off. It'll be Ole Miss basketball.
Ole Miss comes in as the four seed. They took down Florida, a 10-point victory yesterday in the quarterfinal of this tournament. The starting five for Ole Miss, there's some veterans, there's some transfers, but Shakira Austin, she is the one to watch, projected as the number three pick in the WNBA draft. You talk about experience with Shonda Monk on the drive there. This is a player transferred in from ECU. And look, she chose to come to Ole Miss because of the defense, but she's brought offense to the Ole Miss Rebel. South Carolina, they've got a big lineup. They've got Aaliyah Boston and Victoria Saxton down low. Well, and Saxton is going to have to get involved offensively. You see Shakira Austin matched up with Aaliyah Boston. Those two may cancel each other out today. Cook looking for Saxton down low. And it's going to be a shot clock violation. Ole Miss's defense is already affecting South Carolina's offense. Talk about the effect of Aaliyah, of Shakira Austin. She started out on Aaliyah Boston and then ended up blocking the shot of Victoria Saxon. She's really done a nice job inside for Ole Miss. Let's we'll see if South Carolina can get something going. They love to run in transition. Saxton open, swatted away by Shakira Austin and the steal by Boston. It stays with South Carolina. We talked about the defensive presence of Shakira Austin, just being the eraser for the Ole Miss Rebels inside. Doesn't matter. You think you're open on the backside? Not when Miss Austin is there. Cleaning it up. Get out of here. Mimi Reed sees a lane. I'm gonna Ole tell Miss you. with a four-point lead. Ole Miss, getting their, they're getting their confidence from the defensive side. When you show that you can defend South Carolina, that makes things happen. You play more free offensively when you're getting stops. That is Ole Miss's identity. If you go to a Coach Yo practice and at Ole Miss, they're going to have T-shirts on that say, we defend. That's their bread and butter. Brie Beal, patience. And Brie Beal has got to look for her offensive opportunities. So much attention is going to be played to Aaliyah Boston and Destiny Henderson. That was LaShonda Monk on the elevation shot off to the left. It was after the Mississippi State game for Ole Miss that Coach Yo brought this team together and they had an open conversation about who they are. They got away from their identity of their defensive minded first mentality. Well, the thing that Ole Miss had is they experienced success early in the season and then they started trying to protect that instead of staying true to who they are. And Coach Yo owned it. She said, I played part in that as well. She got back to who she was and the rest of the team followed suit. There's going to be a foul called on LaShonda Monk of Ole Miss, who you can already see the feisty defense that she brings. Well, coming in from ECU, she's a two-time AAC Defensive Player of the Year. So when she came to Ole Miss, when Coach O was recruiting her and talking about all this defense, well, it only took Monk two days to make the decision. She's like, yeah, I'm coming to Oxford, Mississippi. That's exactly what she wants. Ole Miss making it hard on South Carolina early. Here goes Aaliyah Boston, the front runner for National Player of the Year. What Don Staley has done at South Carolina has been tremendous. The South Carolina Gamecocks team, 28 and one on the season. Even more impressive, they faced 11 ranked teams and they have won every game. Yeah, they only have one loss on the season. That was to Missouri, but after they, after that, there was a swift correction. Players started getting, really paying attention to the defense, getting on the glass and executing offensively. This team has really learned to play together. The chemistry has developed throughout this season. And they have won 16 straight since that loss to Missouri, including a win over Arkansas yesterday in the quarterfinals. Madison Scott with the block. Monk will pull the ball out. Yeah, one of the things Coach O told us that she wanted to do was play with pace. Didn't want to have to execute in the half court against South Carolina. 
Victoria Saxton, her long arms, getting in the passing lane and taking it in for the layup. I wanted her to dunk it. I did. <laughs> she can do it. She normally does it in warm-ups. I was waiting when she was getting her steps together. I thought it was coming. Yeah, College Game Day was at South Carolina two weeks ago, and in the warm-ups, Victoria Saxton and Letitia and me here threw one down. Oh, I was sitting there at the desk. I heard the, the rim break away. I was like, what is happening? Hey, okay, about lost your mind. <laughs> well, and I got hit in the head with the basketball. Well. <laughs> <laughs> the defense showing up in our first semifinal, Shakira, Austin, and Ole Miss. They already have three blocks in this basketball game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. This is just the second time in SEC tournament history that all four head coaches in the semifinal round are females. The last time was back in 2003 when it was Pat Summit, Sharon Fanning Otis, Sue Gunter, Gunter and Melanie Balcom. And you look at, too, when you look at history, in, the fi in this semifinals, you have three black women that are head coaches of their program. You love to see it. If you see it, you can be it. Absolutely, and to have four women represented in the SEC and look at the athletic directors that have made great decisions in their hires to lead their programs, this is where you get. Two seconds on the shot clock, Zaya Cook has to let it fly. Ole Miss's defense has been the story so far because they are really affecting Don Staley's offense right now. South Carolina shooting just 25% from the field. The last time these two teams played, it was three quarters of going back and forth. Ole Miss hung until the fourth quarter. Right now, defensively, they're doing everything they need to to make it difficult for the Gamecocks to score. Boston looking for room. Aaliyah Boston up off the glass for her first points. Aaliyah Boston is trying for her 23rd consecutive double-double. She has an SEC record 22 in a row. We talk about what makes Aaliyah Boston so good. It's her court awareness, recognizing where the space is, when to pull up for the shot before Madison Scott can get there so that she can be efficient offensively. The Ole Miss in a 2-3 zone right now, and you watch Shakira Austin is traffic control. She's directing traffic of where the coverage needs to be. Kick back out to Destiny Henderson, the veteran point guard. Misses, but she's got a Leah Boston down low, and she'll go to the free throw line. It's interesting to see both Victoria Saxon and Boston on that same block down there on that last play. Well, what they're trying to do is overload the zone. And so when that happens, that's when you can sneak a cutter down on the block on the, on the back side or either space out and have an opening on the reversal. So the first foul is called on Shakira Austin. Aaliyah Boston at the free throw line. She has been talked about so much and rightfully so. Averages a double-double on the season. If she was one rebound shy yesterday of getting a double-double in the first half in the quarterfinals. Yeah. <laughs> she got it for the game, don't worry. 17 points, 14 rebounds yesterday for Aaliyah Boston. Ole Miss, their offense isn't much better than South Carolina's right now. They're 0 for 4 with three turnovers over their last seven possessions. Well, the offense for Ole Miss really is that mid-range jumper, that's an area where they're so good, but against the length of South Carolina, that's tough. Shakira Austin bounces it in, loses a shoe. How many times, that's three shoes now that have come off? But if you're a great player like Shakira Austin, <laughs> like Ryan Howard, you can play barefooted if you need you to. You don't need your shoe. <laughs> Shoes are overrated. A kick to the corner, it's Bree Hall. Too much on the corner three.
Angel Baker, the SEC sixth woman of the year, drives and kicks back to Austin. Baker came off two screens and then saw Aaliyah Boston waiting on her. Madison Scott rebound. The length of South Carolina. Every shot by Ole Miss is contested. But South Carolina turns it right back over into the hands of the Rebels. Oh, man. <laughs> These quite, aren't quite going right just yet for South Carolina just to dribble a rebuild off the heel of Letitia and me here. Well, it's been a sloppy start to this game. Both teams with already four turnovers, both teams shooting 30% or lower from the field. Well, one of the things you talked about is South Carolina, they've been here before, right? They're used to playing in the semifinals, trying to play themselves into the finals. It's a first time for Ole Miss, and Coach Young told her team she felt like they were carrying a lot of pressure. And she said, hey, guys, look, nobody expects us to win. The pressure is all on South Carolina. That's where the expectation is. So just go out and play and have fun. And Deja Puckett whistled for her first foul for Ole Miss. South Carolina's got Camila Cardoso working inside now. Number 10 in white. Henderson with the shot fake and the go around. Cardoso put back. Look, South Carolina's got depth. If one thing's not working, they can rotate in people off the bench. And there's an offensive foul. Second on Puckett. Well, the thing, when you're going against a zone defense, you don't have to settle for outside shots. Nice little shot fake and attack the rim by Destiny Henderson because you know you have 6'7", Camilla Cardoso inside to clean it up. Otisha Me here also in the game for South Carolina. You see that SEC area? Look, that's the soft spot in a zone. South Carolina would benefit from flashes in there. That would make the defense have to collect right there. That's a great look for South Carolina. L.A. doesn't hit, but Bree Beal does. Look, if you get the ball in the middle of the floor, not only have a great position to score, but it puts the rest of your team in the position to get offensive rebounds. Under a minute to go in the quarter. Well, Shonda Monk with a tough shot. It's going to be a foul on Monk, her second, and South Carolina basketball. You know, I was telling you, the SEC, that blue mark in the middle of the lane when Letitia Amihir goes there. Look, there are two. Cardoso backed up, but Bree Bill didn't. She does what she does, and that's go to the glass. She brings that strong, big guard mentality. Cardoso at the free throw line. South Carolina on a 12-2 run. Semifinals of the SEC tournament. Winner will get Tennessee or Kentucky. That game will follow this one. You know, things started going right for South Carolina when Don Staley went to her bench. Angel Baker lays it in, no problem. Shot clock off, ball in the hands of South Carolina. Look, this is <laughs> this is the part of the game Zaya Cook likes. Shot clock running down, end of quarter, end of half. Zaya Cook feels like this is Cook time. Trapped. Just throws up a shot well short. Did Camilla Cardoso get it off in time? No, they wave off the bucket, but they will check it at the monitor. South Carolina ending on a 13 to four run. We talk about game changing players. How about a program changing player for Ole Miss? Her journey when we come back. 
Shakira Austin should be a top three pick in the WNBA draft. The first time we saw her in the college game was at Maryland, and then she decided to transfer to Ole Miss. You know, no one really understood my decision. Um, and that just com comes with me not being open about my situations going on. So from the outside in, it's why is Shakira Austin leaving the University of Maryland? I just had to put myself first and I felt like I did everything that I could at Maryland and I wanted a bigger role. You know, I wanted to showcase my versatility. I wanted to showcase like the impact that I have on the team. Being on the court, you know, I just felt like I needed to be unleashed. Shakira sat down with me in Oxford, Mississippi, and she talks about nobody understood what she had been going through. Like her mom had to go away. She was incarcerated. Her dad had to move away because of work. She was on her own, and this is a young woman that was still growing up and really trying to figure some things out. She was playing mainly on the block inside of the University of Maryland, and she really felt like she needed a change, needed a reset. And when she and Coach Yo got to know each other and build a relationship, she felt like she could have that fresh start at Ole Miss. And a lot of people said, that'll ruin your career. That's a bad decision. It has turned out to be a great decision for Shakira Austin. She has grown not only as a basketball player, but as a woman as well. She's like the mom on the basketball team. She even cooks for this team, and they all brag about what a great cook she is. So she can cook on the court and in the kitchen. Well, it's a lot of cooking going on. She <laughs> has helped this Ole Miss program get back to the SEC tournament semifinals for the first time since 1993, and her game has also expanded. Cardoso at the line for South Carolina. Well, Courtney, she here also in such a central piece to this Ole Miss team, but so is assistant coach Shea Robinson. And he was at Maryland with Shakira, and Coach O reached out to him about getting the program going in the right direction. Now, they had known each other from crossing paths where Shea was developing players out of Orlando, and Coach O was, actually, uh, was at JU in Jacksonville. So he felt he needed to make a change from Maryland to learn how to build a program from the ground up. And he felt like Ole Miss was really the perfect opportunity for him. So as these conversations were taking place, guys, Shakira Austin, she goes into the portal, and Shea reaches out to her and says, I don't know what your plans are, but I think you should at least just talk to Coach Yo." Two days later, he calls her and says, wow, I love her. The rest is history. And Steffi, she never got to take an official visit to Ole Miss because it was COVID time. So she just ended up trusting the process, trusting Shea, and trusting what Coach Yo told her on the phone. It's always interesting to talk to Coach Yo because she, she talks about things that she as a coach has learned. When you have a great player like Shakira Austin, you think first when she comes in, you've got to coddle her. You've got to love her up, and everything that she does is great and wonderful. And she learned from that, and she said, you know, no, that's not the best way to help a player develop. you got to be honest, and sometimes that honesty, it's tough. And developing a relationship, it takes time, and over time, Shakira and Coach Yo developed that trust relationship, and both of them have grown. Camila Cardoso was just whistled for her first foul. Ole Miss gets the basketball back. Angel Baker pivoting around, putting the shot down. Sixth woman of the year in the SEC, coming in from Wright State. After she put on that fantastic performance in the, in the NCAA tournament when she played for Katrina Merriweather. Leticia Ami here, the one-two step. Is that a two-step? Because we're in Nashville. Or was that a Cotton Eye Joe? I don't know about it, any of that. <laughs> and I'm from here. I got to get you down <laughs> to the wild horse, learn some line dancing. <laughs> Austin shot underneath, off the mark. Look, there is a lot of traffic down low on both ends because both of these teams have height and they also have some dominant post players not only do they have height but they have agility they got yeah. post players that can move and i was talking to andy landers yesterday and he was watching shakira austin play and he's like you know carolyn back when we were coaching wouldn't you like to have a team full of players that are six four can run the floor can handle it like a guard i said coach yes absolutely coach i thought you could handle it like a guard though 
Look, Steffi, there was no need to handle it when it came to me because I was going to shoot it before I had to That's put right. it on the deck. That's right. Well, you know, what luxury bench pieces that Don Staley has in Cardoso and Ami here. Leah Boston can take a rest, and there's really no letdown. And this was a business decision for both players because they wanted to be great. And in order to be so, you had to be alongside other great players and had a feeling they were due for a really nice game. Coach Staley felt like maybe they were a little bit rusty coming into the tournament. But, Courtney, I know that you talked to her about L.A. and uh, her visiting with her Olympic team. Yeah, absolutely. Destiny Henderson looking for the three in transition. Leticia, me here, and Camila Cardo. So they both left to play with their national teams within the last month and came back. You've got to wipe some of that rust off. And she said for Leticia, me here, it was really good mentally. It was good to maybe just step away and have a reset with a different coaching staff to be back with those different players. Remember your game and then bring it back to South Carolina. It was like a reboot for L.A. Well, understand that Leticia me, uh, me here is from Canada. So being able to go home and play with her national team. Don talked about being loved up in a different way. The Canada is so proud of her. And to be able to just kind of step away, coached a little differently, you, you go away and you have an appreciation too of what you have in South Carolina. Destiny Henderson amongst the trees. I'm just waiting for Henny to get going because she loves to play in this SEC tournament. Remember two years, was it two years ago, she was the MVP of the SEC tournament. Now she's been on that all tournament team too a couple of times as well. Henderson trying to get South Carolina's offense back on track. It's been a struggle for both teams offensively. And Leticia me here with the travel. Oh, man, that was a little show and go. She just shuffled her feet on that. You know, you mentioned her Canadian national team. She was the first Canadian female to dunk in a basketball game. Did it in high school. Absolutely she did. But she's played not just inside, she's played the guard spot. Remember Destiny Henderson? Well, first, Raven Johnson, the freshman, who was expected to come in and make a major impact. She tore ACL, and so South Carolina didn't have a backup point guard. Do you know who Don Staley looked to? It was Letitia and me here. She moved her to the point guard spot against Clemson and then really ran the show for the Gamecocks in the Bahamas. And especially when they, they beat Connecticut. Yeah, there's three games Destiny Henderson was out. Leticia Mihir was the point guard. She averaged eight points a game and four assists per game in those three games. Angel Baker has Ole Miss's last eight points. Henderson by herself for three. South Carolina is 0 for 5 from behind the arc. Look, Ole Miss is being very patient offensively. Keep an eye here on Angel Baker, clear through. And then when the ball gets swung back, she comes off the screen and allows herself to have enough time to knock down that three. They were bringing Angel Baker off the bench. She was playing so well, but they wanted to give her enough games coming off the bench to get that SEC Sixth Woman of the Year award. And she did. Bree Hall, though, look, this freshman has grown up this season. Doug Stanley loves how she plays defense. She's aggressive offensively. Now that she's familiar with the offense and what Dunn's looking for, she's taken full advantage when her time, when her number is called. Yeah, last three games, she's shooting 50% from the field. LaShonda Monk with the pretty bucket for the Rebels. Here goes Hall again. Aaliyah Boston fouled, trying to get the rebound and the putback. It'll be Boston at the free throw line. Little battle in the Music City, South Carolina Ole Miss. Winner on to the SEC Tournament Final. Our first semifinal of the day, it is Ole Miss. It is South Carolina. Ole Miss making its first appearance in the semifinal since 1993. Winner moves on to the championship to get either Tennessee or Kentucky. That will be our second game 
of the day. This Ole Miss team trailing South Carolina right now. And Steffi, you listening in to Coach Yo? Yeah, she really likes that 2-3 zone, Peck. It's just the guards have to move quicker and really protect that SEC logo. Obviously, we kind of pointed out that it's a weakness of the 2-3. But boxing out, she put in Taya Douglas because she knows she'll box out and she'll rebound and look for them offensively to LaShonda Monk and Shakira Austin and pick and roll, try to free Shakira up a little bit on the offensive side of the floor. When I think offensively too, when you put Monk and Boston, or Monk and Austin in the two-man game, Angel Baker is looking for her shot. I would look for her to be opposite, to see if her defense rotates to try to help on the pick and pop or pick and roll. That'll open up number 15 because she is, she's scoring the ball now for Ole Miss. Yeah, four of six from the field is Angel, Angel Baker. She's at the bottom of your screen right now in the corner. Eight seconds, Baker's got the basketball, guarded by Bree Hall. Foul on Aaliyah Boston. First called on Aaliyah Boston. She's got six points, four rebounds early on for South Carolina. Now, remember that. Remember Angel Baker coming off the ball screen of whoever Aaliyah Boston is guarding. If Boston is late, you know, the best way to defend her is to get her into foul trouble. She's got one. Oh, Victoria Saxon almost had herself another steal. Austin on Boston. Cook with the speed, turnover. Cook's got to be willing to pass ahead. She's got to give that basketball up and then trust she can get it back. Foul is on Bree Hall of South Carolina. She was working on Shakira Austin. Well, Bree Hall has the responsibility. We talked about the scoring of Angel Baker. Hall's going to take a seat. But what does Don Staley do? Put even a bigger player on Angel Baker. Now it's L.A. Leticia Mihir has that assignment. Well, she's got the longest wingspan on the team. Destiny Henderson whistled for the foul. Angel Baker elevates, short corner. Yeah, Baker likes a postseason. That's when she turns her game up to another level. Angel Baker's got 10 points. They go inside to Leticia Me here, the high-low game. Aaliyah Boston underneath. That's eight points for Boston. And we talked about Ami here. Right now, she's playing the three for South Carolina. So she can play the one, she can play the three, the four, whatever. Two. It's about the only number you left off. Yeah. <laughs> Zaya Cook will bring it to the other side. Or she can take it to the basket. That's what makes Letitia and me here so dangerous, especially when she can flash to the middle of the floor. She's got the option to score it, or she has two big targets in Victoria Saxon and Aaliyah Boston. And Ole Miss calls timeout. South Carolina extending this to a 10-point lead. Well, not only does Aaliyah Boston put up big numbers, she knows everything that's going on the, on, on the floor for South Carolina. Aaliyah Boston's almost like the point guard on the floor. Watch her as she is directing traffic. She is telling the guards, get the ball to uh, Leticia, me here, because she thinks a pass ahead. She already had the defense on the backside and knew where the pass that would lead to the scoring pass needed to come from. Well, Don Staley and Leah Boston, they both talked about she's a basketball junkie. She spent so much time studying the game, working on her game. 
She knows every play, probably from every position for South Carolina. Well, and the one thing that Aaliyah Boston has done in every season, she's done something to take her game to the next level. Well, she spent five days with Tim Duncan this summer. And in talking to Tim, he said that Aaliyah Boston, one of the things that they really worked with was court awareness, understanding she is the best player on the floor. She's going to attract a lot of attention. There's a three-second violation that got Don Staley out of her chair, sprinting to almost half court. That's a turnover and Ole Miss basketball. We talked about the stars in this game, Aaliyah Boston, Shakira Austin. Austin has missed her last five shots. That's a tough pass inside with South Carolina's defense. Transition bucket, Zaya Cook will take two and maybe one more. I love the decision of Destiny Henderson as she is coming in transition. She gave a little peek to Zaya Cook, running the lane and right on time, dropping dimes and Cook is able to finish. Those are the first points for Zaya Cook in this one. Her and Destiny Henderson, two points apiece. Make it three for Zaya Cook, a second team all SEC selection. Now, Coach O wants this to be an up and down game, and South Carolina is controlling the tempo. South Carolina is causing Ole Miss to really execute in the half court, and then the Gamecocks opportunistic. They are the ones that are able to get out, play fast. Yeah, and Ole Miss has not executed in the half court, a scoring drought over two minutes. The dump off to Shakira Austin. First made bucket in five attempts. Under a minute to go in the half. South Carolina looking for its seventh SEC tournament final appearance. How about that move? Austin versus Boston. Boston's got the double figure points with 10, four rebounds. The balance now, it's not just the Aaliyah Boston show. The defense couldn't rotate off and help when Boston made that move because Leticia Meher has shown that she is a scoring threat. Zaya Cook, but woo! Angel Baker, look, she had that wink like she had something in her eyes. She was like, yeah, I know, I'm feeling it. Ole Miss needs to keep going to number 15. Angel Baker with 12 points, six of eight from the field. Look, rebounding's always critical when you're facing South Carolina. And offensive rebounds, they have eight so far. And everybody's getting into the act. You have Camilla Cardoso. You have Bree Bill from the guard spot. Key that the guards get involved. Even Henny getting in on the action. Another guard rebounding for South Carolina, creating extra possessions for South Carolina. South Carolina is sixth in the nation in offensive rebounds per game. They get 16 and a half offensive rebounds per game and they score 16 second chance points per game. They already have 13. Well, and you, they're, all, they're sixth in the nation because they are not as many that could be because they also shoot a pretty decent percentage as well. <laughs> You know, one year in the WNBA, I asked Mike Tebow about offensive rebounds, and he's like, well, if we miss shots, that means there's going to be more to have. Six seconds. Letitia, me here. She's got to go. Stripped of the basketball. South Carolina leads at 33-22 at the half. The SEC Player of the Year, 10 points, four rebounds. It was a battle for South Carolina, but they used that depth to extend this lead into the locker room. Don Staley standing by with Steffi. Well, Don, you guys built a lead there out of that second quarter. What stood out to you? I mean, it's, 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 it's a... Well, execute a game on both sides of the ball. We're both defending. The bo we're both defending. Um, I thought our big lineup really helped us. It, it allowed us to get some high-low action. It allowed LA to be athletic and get to the basket. We just need we need better guard play. To be quite honest.
What, what do you feel like your message will be to your guards then, given that you need them to play better? I mean, you got to be just sure. Just be confident dribbling the ball. I mean, it's, it's a fundamental thing, dribbling. Just dribble. Dribble without thinking. Let the ball find who should shoot it. Let the ball find who should receive the pass. It's really simple basketball. Thank you, Don. Appreciate it. Over to the studio, Alyssa Lang and Andrea Carter. You're watching the SEC on ESPN. It's been fun to be in the Music City this week. We've had some amazing basketball just off of Broadway. Our first semifinal, the number one team in the nation, the South Carolina Gamecocks, leading Ole Miss 33-22 to as we get set for the start of the third quarter. The Stars are out, too. Shakira Austin projected to be the number three pick in the WNBA draft, going up against Aaliyah Boston, the SEC Player of the Year. She's got 22 straight double-doubles, and guess what? She is working on number 23. Courtney Lyle alongside national championship winning head coach Carolyn Peck, Steffi Sorensen also with us. It was a little bit of a slow start for South Carolina offensively because these are two really talented defensive teams. That second quarter, though, they found their rhythm. Well, they had to find a way to beat the zone of Ole Miss, and it started with Aaliyah Boston directing traffic. You got a point guard that's 6'5". Watch her down low. Watch Aaliyah Boston right there. She's going to point and say, get the ball to the middle of the floor where Letitia and me here is going to be. When you get the ball there, look, when you know you can produce points, you talk about the pass that leads to the pass. And then South Carolina really just started getting the ball to their superstar. Aaliyah Boston has the ability find her space, find her opportunities, and when the stars get going, the confidence of the rest of the team goes up another level. Now South Carolina's offense, they're plus 13 in second chance points, plus 12 in paint points, plus 11 points off of turnovers. South Carolina is a veteran group. They do not panic even when defenses come at them. They've seen so many different kinds of defenses, so they know it'll just take a matter of time. They adjust, and then they find a way to pull away. Three second violation called on Aaliyah Boston. Ole Miss offensively, it's been Angel Baker. She has been the consistent factor. 12 points, six of eight from the field. Are you surprised she's not starting the second half? Look, she's done so well coming in off the bench. So I expect now it won't be but a few minutes until she comes in. But I think that Yo is trying to give her starters an opportunity to get going. Aaliyah Boston with the block, and that's the first block by South Carolina. Um, Steffi caught up with Coach Yo. Yeah, the message, guys, at the half was, most importantly, we belong here. So believing that was most important. But on the court, there was two things that really stood out. And one was they've got to take better care of the basketball. Obviously, South Carolina made them pay. But getting crushed on the glass, expect them to be more physical, try to get their own offensive rebounds and putbacks in this second half. Yeah, South Carolina out rebounding Ole Miss 19 to 12. They have seven offensive rebounds. But the turnovers are even. It's just a matter of being able to capitalize because if South Carolina turns the ball over, it's not been the fast paced game that Coach O was looking for. Now, Coach Yo talked about wanting to run with South Carolina as opposed to letting South Carolina set up its defense and trying to run their offense, Ole Miss's offense, in the half court. It's hard to do against that size. Victoria Sexton with range. See, that's an area where South Carolina's offense has, has really improved. Victoria Saxon has been known for the shot blocking, the rebounding, and she has really worked on her face-up game. Madison Scott over Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, Saxon's got to be on the radar of WNBA GMs with the energy that she has, the joy of the game she plays with, the tenacity defensively. She would be an added benefit in the WBA. Shakira Austin with a little block action on Aaliyah Boston. Well, we already know that Austin is on the radar. I mean, we talk about her being a potential third pick in the draft. I think Mike Tebow of the Washington Mystics, he's got a tough decision. Do you, you know, go with Ryan Howard and the way she has played since she's been here in Nashville? Yeah, I think about it. Or do you go with an Alyssa Smith? 
And Alyssa Smith out of Baylor. Ryan Howard had 32 points yesterday for Kentucky. Helped them get to the semifinals. They'll take on Tennessee after this game. And one of the things Coach O talked about for her team offensively is she wanted to play in the middle of the floor. The middle third, she felt like that was an opportunity that she could create for Shakira Austin. Well, South Carolina is not allowing the ball to come in the middle. Amy Reed tries it and runs into Aaliyah Boston. Madison Scott now gets her shot blocked by Saxton. That's what Saxton brings. Ooh, Snuda Collins said she can bring that too. Look, shot blocking in this tournament, our statistician Jeff Muir looked this up. We have averaged about 11 blocks per game in the SEC tournament combined. I'm here for it. Yeah. A little defense in Nashville this week. All right, but the coaching in me says, what about a little shot fake? That might help I you mean, out a little yeah. bit. <laughs> How about that move? I love it. Victoria Saxton has improved offensively. She has become more aggressive on the offensive end for South Carolina. Block after block. Henderson gives it up to Zaya Cook. You heard Dawn Staley tell Steffi at the half she wanted better guard play in the second half. And that's going to be a turnover off the fingertips of Boston. Look, going back to Victoria Saxton, I love how she owns her role. She knows exactly what South Carolina needs. She wants to do whatever Dawn Staley asks of her in order for South Carolina to have success. I asked her, I said, where do you get that want to as far as getting on the glass, playing defense? And she pointed to her to her chest. She said, it comes from my heart. And I'm like, ah. Oh. She goes, now, I just love to play. Now, she said, I didn't always love it. I said, well, when did you start playing? She said, when I was eight years old, she said, my mama and her mom played at the University of, of Alabama. She said, took her to play. And Victoria said, I hated it. The first time out, I shot the ball over the whole goal. <laughs> well, she didn't on that last layup. It was Victoria Saxton underneath the basket for South Carolina, forcing Ole Miss to call the timeout. Saxton with eight points as South Carolina. They love to play defense. They love to run in transition. And yeah, they love the layup. Well, from the NBA to the WNBA, you're seeing some future talent here at the SEC tournament that's going to play professionally. Ryan Howard waiting in the wing. She will play with Kentucky against Tennessee and Shakira Austin in this game right now. These are both projected as top three picks in the WNBA draft this year. And not only are these players going to be drafted, they will make impacts immediately when they come into the WNBA. Yeah, Destiny Henderson on that projected draft list as well. Her stock has been rising her entire career as South Carolina's point guard. Snuda! Snuda Collins is going to have to be involved and look for her shot offensively for Ole Miss if they want to get themselves back into this game. You know, a big problem for Ole Miss has been turning the ball over, and South Carolina is just capitalizing on that. The Giants of South Carolina. That's 6-4, playing the three spot. Letitia Me here on the drive. The block by Me here and no foul call. Well, guys, take a look at this 2-3 zone. See how there's really no closeout by Angel Baker. Mimi Reed slow to rotate over L.A. Gets right to the SEC logo and makes some pay. And then after she scored, she gets the block. Letitia Me here can do a little bit of everything for South Carolina. Well, Don Staley told us when Letitia Me here came into the program, she thought she had the most upside of anyone in that class when she came in. Just the growth, the ability to grow, and we've seen that towards the end of the season. And I love how she's moving. Remember before she came to South Carolina, she was recovering from an ACL. And now no brace. It doesn't seem to have hindered her whatsoever. She is back to 100%, Letitia Me here. I think she slowed down too. There were a lot of times early in her career, she would get moving too quickly and travel with the basketball. Uh, she was a travel every time she caught it. And so now. Well, I was trying the, to be nice. Well, I'm just going to be honest. That's <laughs> what happened. And that was because she already knew in her mind what she wanted to do with the basketball. Now it's all coming together. The patience that she's playing with, the poise. Henny in the corner. 
That's just the second three-pointer by the Gamecocks today. Destiny Henderson is attractive for the WNBA because she can play either the point or combo guard because of her ability to do that right there, shoot the basketball. Boston with her fifth rebound. We've got an eye on that double-double. It would be her 23rd straight, 10 points, five rebounds. Dump down to Bree Beal. The land of the Giants. You saw how high Camilla Cardoso kept the rebound until she figured out what she wanted to do with it. Well, Leah Boston, one of the best players in the game, the SEC Player of the Year. Her teammates, the South Carolina fans, they love her. Getting player of the year was really exciting and breaking the double-double streak was amazing. I'm really blessed that I was able to do that, thanking God for just his blessings and thanking him for blessing me with a great team. Aaliyah Boston is pretty special. She is a go-getter. She's always smiling. She's always uh, lifting up our teammates. So she's just a perfect teammate when it comes to being that leader. Aaliyah is extremely dominant in my eyes. She's just very versatile. Her ability to shoot the ball, you know, it's just amazing seeing her play. She's a fun player to watch. Yeah, Leah Boston is a fun player to watch, especially if she is on your team, one of the best players in the nation. Well, it is amazing the talent and how she plays on the court, but she also is really a great example. She is the role model for her teammates because of how hard she works. She is one of the hardest workers in practice. She is always knowledgeable about what Coach Don Staley wants to happen on the floor. You see a lot of her teammates come to her or she will go to them if she feels like they need to be picked up. A lot of their players talk about how she really has been an inspiration to all of them. Letitia and me here with the volleyball set back into the bucket. Ooh, snut it wide open on the backside. Well, Mrs. Offense has struggled here in the third quarter. Angel Baker might be able to help that. She has been their leading scorer today, now with 15 points. You know, going back to Aaliyah Boston, she had to make the decision to leave St. Thomas Virgin Islands, her home, to go to Massachusetts, to live with family, so that she could have a better basketball environment, so she could play on better teams, to get more experience, to have the chance to play at a place like South Carolina. Well, her, her parents recognized the talent that she had, the love for the game that she had, and they wanted to seek out the resources of where she could really reach the goals that she had set for herself. She loves basketball, and she's very cerebral too. She wants to know the why. She wants to know the how to get things done. There's a mismatch, Baker, Cardoso. Boston steps in for the block. That's the third block by Aaliyah Boston. Down low, and one coming on both ends. I mean, that's what sets Celia Boston apart. She affects the game on both sides. Look, player efficiency rating. Aaliyah Boston is the number one player in the country because she does that. Get it done on both ends. When she's on the floor, the positives far exceed the negatives better than anybody in the country when you're talking about Aaliyah Boston. Three-point play for the SEC Player of the Year. Still five rebounds away from that double-double. All five of South Carolina's blocks have come in this second half. They've only allowed two field goals. Ole Miss two for 12 in this half. Look, you have Aaliyah Boston guarding Sonetta Collins. It's a guard on the backside of the offense for Ole Miss. LaShonda well, Monk elevates, and then there's Boston with her sixth rebound. Down low to Cardoso. So we've talked about the ball handling of Destiny Henderson, the scoring of Destiny Henderson, and the delivery of the basketball in an area the way you can score. She leads to your strengths. Destiny Henderson is lucky, too. Look at all these weapons she has. She can just pick anybody. Like That's a luxury. When you have so much talent around you. Look, 6'4", Letitia Mee here. 
<laughs> starting the offense. Henderson will take over here, 20 seconds on the shot clock as South Carolina sets up the play. Pass too high for Boston, but she is fouled. You watch Destiny Henderson and Camilla Cardoso, both players did their jobs. Cardoso keeping the spacing, and then Henny, look, give it to the big girl that leads to the score. That's just easy. Destiny Henderson will take a seat. Her numbers, five points, four rebounds, five assists for Henny. I just wonder if Dawn Staley is going to allow Aaliyah Boston to get that streak. She takes a seat at the end of this third quarter. Still three rebounds shy. Ami here, skies it to get the rebound. Mimi Reed, the steal. And we were talking to Coach Yo this morning before this game and how hard she's worked to turn this program around at Ole Miss. Again, this is their first semifinal appearance since 1993 at the SEC tournament. We said, what does it mean to you to do it for players like Mimi Reed, who have been there for, it seems like, 40 years? Yeah, Mimi Reed said she feels like the grandmother of the team yeah. that she's been at Ole Miss for so long. But Coach Yo said she really felt the pressure of, she didn't want to take this team back to the WNIT, she wanted to get them to the NCAA tournament. And she felt the pressure and the responsibility to do that, not only for Mimi Reed, but when you have a top three draft pick in Shakira Austin, you want to provide that opportunity for her as well. And Ole Miss is on track to make the NCAA tournament. They're projected as a number six seed. It would be their first appearance since 2007. I thought they should have made it last year, but what did Coach Yo do with that? She went on and took them to the WNIT and got them to the finals. They were the runners, runners up. Saxton in and out. Shakira Austin's going to run the floor for Ole Miss. And she's fouled by Cardoso. That's the second on Camila Cardoso. Shakira Austin, it's been a quiet night so far. Four points, two for nine from the field. Just one rebound in 22 minutes. Well, Tuesday night on the SEC Network and the ESPN app, our next SEC Inside grants you an all-access pass to this tournament, the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament. That's at 7 Eastern on Tuesday. You'll get never-before-seen footage and sounds from players and coaches, a real behind-the-scenes look. I've seen the cameras all over the arena here at Bridgestone. Those are some really cool pieces. That's how we got the Kelly Harper sound in the locker room from SEC Inside. Absolutely. And look, some great, we've had some great moments here. You know, Vanderbilt got the triple-double. River trying to dump it up to Saxton with 4.2 seconds left in the third quarter. And it'll be a turnover. Angel Baker, somebody better pick her up. Leticia Me here does. Baker gets the shot off. South Carolina outscoring Ole Miss 20 to 8 in the third quarter. Aaliyah Boston on the hunt for her 23rd straight double double. Boston's got 13 points, seven rebounds. She's already got 22 in a row. Can she make it 23? Well, the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament back in Nashville, Tennessee for the first time since 2018. The fans are always great. Broadway is always hopping. And guess what? We're going to hand out some hardware in the Music City tomorrow. Championship game will be at 2 Eastern over on ESPN. You can see a little more history made. Leah Boston, 13.7 rebounds. She is seeking her 23rd straight double-double. She already has the SEC record. She passed Sylvia Fowles, who had 19 straight double-doubles when she played at LSU. So she's back in the ball game to start this fourth quarter. Three away. I can guarantee you once she gets that 10th rebound, Don Staley's getting her out of this ball game. Sona Collins was fouled on the three-point shot by Sonia Rivers. Or second. 
Ole Miss has only hit two shots in this half from the field. But I tell you, they've got to stop giving up easy shots to South Carolina. South Carolina, 16 of 20 on layups. They're putting on a clinic. And South Carolina, the experienced team in this tournament. This has been their tournament as of late. The Gamecocks, they're seeking their seventh SEC tournament title in the last eight seasons. Yeah, I talked about it yesterday. This used to be the Pat Summit Invitational. Now it's become the Don Staley Invitational. She's pretty much dominated the SEC tournament. And South Carolina, Oral Miss, if South Carolina can hang on here, whoever wins this game, they'll move on to the championship to get Tennessee or Kentucky. That's our second game coming up. Approximately 7.30 Eastern here on ESPNU. And Madison Scott is fouled on the layup by Camila Cardoso, her third foul. Now, Zaya Cook turns the ball over. This is how Coach Yo wants the Rebels to play, running in transition. South Carolina can't get sloppy. They can't start clock watching down the stretch because I expect they'll miss to bring a full, some full court pressure try to create more turnovers to get themselves in this ball game. It's not out of reach. There's still plenty of time. Leah Boston now two rebounds away from that double-double. South Carolina has shown a lot of patience offensively. They did not get off to the best start in that first quarter, but they settled in nicely. Boston for three. Wedgie. Yep. <laughs> I'd be so afraid to jump up there and not be able to get it. Okay, number one, I would not let you try to jump up I, there. I'm imagining you myself get it. in a Division One basketball player's body, not in what I actually am in real life. Now, back in the day, and I know Steffi's waiting with a comment, but back yeah. in the day, I could have done that. Were you holding the broom? Just wondering. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was waiting on it, Steffi Sorensen. I knew it was coming. Steffi, that was perfect. <laughs> Nothing but love for my mama bear over there. It's nine rebounds for Aaliyah Boston. One more. And that's the second foul on Shakira Austin. Boston refocusing. She's one of the captains on the South Carolina team, her and Victoria Saxton. She's a two-time Lisa Leslie Award winner, a two-time All-American, the SEC Player of the Year. She and Victoria Saxton are extremely co close also. On senior night, it was Aaliyah Boston that was shedding tears, not Victoria. Victoria Saxton looked at Don Staley and said, look, I'm fine, no tears, I'm good. But it was Aaliyah Boston that knew that the time is closing for an opportunity to play on the same team with Victoria Saxon. You know, watching that moment, we were at that game, you could feel that in your heart, Aaliyah Boston over there with tears coming down her face as Victoria Saxon walked out. Well, I, just the example that Victoria sets for the rest of the players. She worked so hard. She didn't really get the shine that players get that lead the team in scoring or lead the team in rebounding, but she just does that blue collar work. This is Rivers, draws the double team, Cardoso. Rebound, put back, no, but she will get to the free throw line. Fouls on Mimi Reed, her second. I'd say that Camilla Cardoso is going to feel about Aaliyah Boston the way Aaliyah Boston feels about Victoria Saxon. And Don Staley talks to Camilla about, look, you need to absorb as much as you can from Aaliyah Boston, the example that she has set, because she is the future center of this Gamecock program. Yeah, I was going to say, it took guts for Camila Cardoso when she decided to transfer from Syracuse to pick South Carolina because they had a big post presence already, but the opportunity, like you said, to learn from these other players, Cardoso's just a sophomore. Well, you mentioned it earlier, Don Staley said that when Cardoso decided to come 
to South Carolina. It was a business decision. She knew she could come to a place where her game was going to be better, and she wanted to play with great players. And that's certainly happening right now. Shakira Austin from deep. Austin now with eight points. I'm telling you, there's enough time for Ole Miss to make a run. South Carolina has led by as many as 25. Well, they had Cardoso for a second. Back out to Rivers. Pushed it too far. Rivers checks out. Leticia Ami here back in. LaShonda Monk in for Ole Miss. Monk's a scoring threat as well. Averages about 10 points per game. South Carolina ball. And look, Shakira Austin is trying to take over like she did in that Florida game. In that second second half, she put on a clinic. She had 27 points yesterday. And I mean, she had several wow moments during that game. Yeah, a full stat line as well. 27 points, 13 rebounds. Excuse me. Yeah, 13 rebounds, six blocks. Traveling violation on Leticia Me here. Winner of our game gets either the Lady Volunteers or the Kentucky Wildcats, Tennessee, in the wings right now at Bridgestone Arena. They dominated Alabama yesterday. Well, and on the glass, and it wasn't domination necessarily by Tamari Key. Alexis Dye Hello. went to work for the Lady Vols. Welcome to the SEC tournament. Oh, and Ray Burrell getting, getting back to looking more like herself. She was not only scoring, but she was distributing the basketball. She had seven assists yesterday. The offense is moving for the Lady Vols. Um, you know who else was really good yesterday? Uh, this young lady. Let me I tell think you. it might have been Ryan time. Oh, it was Ryan time when she arrived in Nashville, Davidson County. Ryan Howard brought it. Get ready. She was red hot. She was five of six from the three point line. 32 points the second time she's done that in the last three games for Kentucky. They got the upset of LSU, who's the number two seed. Kim Mulkey's first game at the SEC tournament. Fouls on the floor, and it's on LaShawn Monk. And South Carolina's length, their defense, it has been so difficult for Ole Miss to score points, even for Shakira Austin. It's just difficult to get the ball inside. So, uh, Ole Miss, they're not really known for, haven't had a very, very much success shooting the ball from the three-point line. It is within the twos. They're in the high 60% of their offense comes from two-point shots. That foul was actually caught on Leticia Me here, her first. <laughs> Held ball, possession arrows pointing to the Rebels. Look, it's funny. Yella, look, Coach Yo, she didn't argue that call, and she told us this morning, she said, I can guarantee you, I will be there for the full 40 minutes. I'm not getting a toss today. I'm here for it. <laughs> Let's in reference. We saw Alabama's head coach, Christy Curry, get ejected in the second quarter yesterday after two technical fouls. Victoria Saxton whistled for the foul for South Carolina. Uh, Don Staley has walked up the court, come a little closer to keep an eye on what's happening down on the other end of the floor. Shakira Austin went down and then made a comment to the refs with some enthusiasm. Well, she's a fire player. She plays with a lot of passion. She came down. Ooh, Victoria Saxon came down on that leg. 
but it's a good sign Austin's back up. Seven seconds, Monk. Do you see Austin just hit the gas going to the rebounding boards? Telling you, there's plenty of time. And Ole Miss has outscored South Carolina 12 to two here in the fourth quarter. Look, Shakira Austin is turning it up right now in this fourth quarter. Look, it's a senior playing with a sense of urgency. There is no quit in this young woman and she knows she's gotta be the leader for this Ole Miss team. When these two teams faced off on Sunday in the regular season finale, Ole Miss only had eight points in the fourth quarter. They've got 12 in this fourth quarter. Natalia Boston, that should be her 10th rebound, giving her 23 straight double doubles. But I take that back, Don Staley's not gonna take her out. Ole Miss is making a run. Eight seconds, Leticia and me here to Henderson. Boston lost it and fouled. Just setting record after record. The streak continues. It's 23 straight double doubles for one of the most dominant players in the game. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Principal, helping you plan, protect, invest, and retire. The number one South Carolina, they're the number one team in the nation, Aaliyah Boston. Her 23rd straight double-double. She's the number one player in the country, and it's because of the versatility. She will share the basketball. She will get the ball to you right when you need it, and then you pay it back. Give it right to the big girl. You got to listen to her. She knows what she's talking about. She will bring it defensively for you as well. South Carolina is where they are because of Aaliyah Boston, and she's going to continue setting records the way this woman's playing right now. And they're going to need her to stay in the game right now, even though she has the record and South Carolina has the lead because Ole Miss is on a 14 to two run over the last seven minutes and 30 seconds. I'm telling you the way that Shakira Austin played yesterday, South Carolina has to be concerned on how Ole Miss can close out ball games. Do you mean her 27 points? Holler if you hear me. Yeah, for the people in the back, 27 points for Shakira Austin yesterday. She's trying to help Ole Miss get back in this thing. They have not been to a SEC tournament final since 1983. Keep an eye on Angel Baker, number 14 for Ole Miss. Number zero, Shakira Austin and LaShonda Monk, number one. Those three, very dangerous. Yeah, Baker's their leading scorer tonight with 18. But they're not dangerous if they don't have the basketball. Not offensively, at least. Yeah, but Snedda Collins, look. She is just, she gets after you defensively. You talk to Coach Yo about her and you say, you ask her a question about Monk and she's like, oh yeah, she's my kind of player. There's LaShonda Monk. She got to hit the layup. Madison Scott, back to Austin. Elevates. Hey, that's a big decision on Madison Scott to understand, look, don't take it up over Aaliyah Boston. Wait till Austin got there, then Austin got the finish. South Carolina has led by 25 tonight. Ole Miss creeping closer. Blocking foul on LaShonda Monk. Her third. Monk got the steal in the last possession. She came down, missed the shot. But it was Madison Scott got the rebound, and instead of trying to go over a, or shoot over a taller, longer Aaliyah Boston, she gives it to Austin, who has a smaller target over Bill, and she's able to finish. Free haul at the free throw line, drops in the first one. Ends a 7-0 run by Ole Miss.
You know, looking at South Carolina's players out on the floor right now, we haven't seen Zaya Cook in a while. She has three points, one for eight from the field. Steffi's telling us she did confirm she's okay. She's just over on the bench right now for South Carolina. Yeah, I think that sometimes Zaya Cook can try too hard. And Don Staley has really worked with her, letting the game come to her. You know, Zaya wants it so bad. And I know that she is pressing to help this team get on to play tomorrow. And I think when sometimes when players press too hard, things don't go right. And having the understanding, it might not be your night. And the bench has been very good for South Carolina. Bree Hall coming in. Sanaya Rivers has given good minutes. Leticia me here as well. Zach Cook doesn't need to panic. There's plenty of time. There are going to be plenty of games left for South Carolina. It will be Cook's time. Ole Miss tried to bring the pressure, and LaShonda Monk, no, excuse me, they're going to call it on Madison Scott, her first, as Ole Miss trying to trap Destiny Henderson. Well, I expected the full court pressure, but what Ole Miss has got to do is go after those steals, but they can't foul. You know, they don't want to put South Carolina to the free throw line. And looking at the personnel, going back to Zaya Cook, looking at the personnel right now on the floor for South Carolina, this is a pretty big lineup for South Carolina, minus Destiny Henderson, who's their point guard. Well, who for South Carolina can you put on the floor where you wouldn't say? Okay. <laughs> That's a big lineup. I know. Zaya Cook's about six feet tall. So. You know, they've got big guards. I think that really recruiting recruiting to the system, the style that South Carolina likes to play. And look, these are two number one recruiting classes. Two years ago, well, actually three years ago, they had the number one recruiting class. And then this class that is a freshman this year, they're the number one class as well. Angel Baker from the elbow. She's been the most consistent for Ole Miss in this game. That's 20 points for Angel Baker, a natural scorer. Fifth time this season she's gone over the 20-point mark. Held ball, possession arrow pointing to South Carolina. You know, we were talking in one of the breaks. This is the pressure you wanted to see from Ole Miss. Absolutely. I was expecting that full court pressure. Coach O believes in her defense. She believes that she can get steals or can, uh, can force South Carolina to turn the ball over. That's what they're going to have to do to get back in this game. That pressure is why South Carolina's last field goal was at the two-minute mark in the third quarter. That's over nine minutes without a field goal for the Gamecocks. They will have seven seconds on the shot clock. Henderson facing all kinds of pressure with LaShonda Monk on her. Barely got that shot off. Yeah, you had Victoria Saxton posting up down low. With the clock running down, you got to get it to the block if you don't have an open look. And Ole Miss is going to call timeout. Well, we're here at the SEC Women's Basketball Tournament. Let's take a look at the West Coast Conference Men's Basketball Tournament bracket. Quarterfinals will take place tonight. We'll get you more on that in a moment. Nope, here we are. Quarterfinals coming up tonight at 10.30 Eastern, 12.30 a.m. Eastern on ESPN2. Championship will air Tuesday at 9 on ESPN. Look, we have had a great tournament here in Nashville. We've seen triple doubles. We've seen coaches get ejected. We've seen players <laughs> make history. We've seen 30-point games. We've seen it all. And right now, we're seeing the number one team in the nation being held without a field goal for the last nine minutes. Well, we've seen teams come back. Remember, Florida came back over Vanderbilt. I believe that Ole Miss has it in them as well. But remember now, Ole Miss only has one timeout left. So they've got to take full advantage of every possession. They've got to get the ball to Shakira Austin. And they also can go to Angel Baker to get buckets and then automatically get into that full court pressure, try to force turnovers and get South Carolina playing on their heels. Eight seconds for Austin. Wow.
stepped around Victoria Saxton, ran into Aaliyah Boston, still finished the bucket. You started that whole call perfectly with a wow. I said that several times watching her play yesterday. She was able to really dominate. She commanded the floor. She commanded the basketball yesterday, and she is doing the same thing right now. Shakira Austin at the free throw line. She has some of, has had some of her best performances in her Ole Miss career at this tournament. The two highest scoring performances of her career have come at the SEC tournament. One of them was yesterday with 27 points. She turns it up and she has helped Ole Miss pull within eight. A 22 to five run for the Rebels over the last 10 plus minutes. Not out of it yet. But they can't use a lot of time, and they don't have to necessarily settle for the three. They need to get action to the basket because they've been pretty successful getting to the free throw line. South Carolina ball. Gamecocks led by 25, and Coach Yo has her Rebels back in this ball game. Look, they reflect that fire of their head coach. There's no lack of energy on the Ole Miss sideline. I talked to Mimi Reed about it. She said, Coach O's like a pit bull. The call on the floor, South Carolina ball. They're going to go to the monitor and take a look at the possession. Well, that's good for Ole Miss because they only have one timeout left, so they can use this as a timeout. But you were talking about the personality of the head coach. Coach Yo is like a pit bull. She is. She gets after it. She's fiery. And Mimi Reed said, well, I'm kind of like the German Shepherd. I'm, I'm mean and tough and protective. And this scrappy play, this is how Ole Miss, they go after it. You see Madison Scott, I mean, on her knees, trying to do everything that she can to save the possession for the Rebels. And I think Madison Scott, yeah, she's, I think she's the last one to touch it. Gets it with a fingertip as she reaches out. So this should be South Carolina basketball, but they just want to confirm. So that's why they're at the monitor. Yeah, now with a minute and seven left, though, South Carolina will have to take the ball out because can't. So you can't, the, you can't advance the ball just yet. So uh, South Carolina will have to bring it full court the distance. And I believe Ole Miss is going to bring that full court pressure again. South Carolina has not handled that extremely well. Yeah, well, South Carolina hasn't had a field goal since the two minute mark of the third quarter. And Aaliyah Boston is having to play a lot more minutes than Don Staley probably would have liked. There's the pressure. Henderson, can she get through it? Too high for Victoria Saxton and the pressure paying off. See, now again, Angel Baker, keep an eye also. Seneca Collins, a three-point threat if the defense collapses inside. Collins at the top of the screen. Austin will take the three. Do you like that shot? I do. I do. I think that Shakira Austin is one of the best options offensively for Ole Miss. Ole Miss has been able to trim and get back into this ball game. Angel Baker, Shakira Austin, really a one-two punch. And they've turned up the heat defensively as well. They have not backed down. There's no quit in Ole Miss. They have brought the fire and fight. The last time these two teams played, Coach O said she built a lot of confidence from that because Ole Miss hung with South Carolina the first three quarters. It went to the fourth quarter that then the Gamecocks were able to put their foot on the gas. Yeah, it's been the opposite case here because Ole Miss has outscored South Carolina in this fourth quarter, 20 to five. And Shakira Austin has been a big part of that. 11 points by Shakira Austin alone in the fourth quarter. South Carolina calls that timeout. They advance the basketball, 40.5 seconds remaining. Winner to the SEC Tournament Championship game. Oh, wow. 
And Destiny Henderson to the free throw line. And we're still 16 seconds on the shot clock, though, when Destiny Henderson went for the shot. That's a little early. I can understand if it was a clear path that wasn't. She's fortunate to get to the free throw line because if you're South Carolina, you want to use as much time on the clock as possible. That Ole Miss doesn't have extra position, possessions to chip away into this league. I think Ole Miss's defense helped with that, take that quick shot because they're trying to speed her up with Absolutely. all that pressure. Right. Yep. Don't miss only one timeout. Yo's going to lose. She's going to use her last one. Ole Miss will advance the basketball. No timeouts remaining for the Rebels. South Carolina has two left, but 30.2 seconds, and they need 10 points. Well, and so they're going to have to, Coach Yo's going to have to talk about the next three possessions, not just this possession, because she won't be able to gather her team again. So she's got to talk about right now, they need to score quick. They don't necessarily need a three, but as soon as they can score the basketball, then if Dawn doesn't call timeout, then she's got to foul right away. Let no time go off that clock. And every steal has to be going after the basketball. You don't want to have to have, you get called for an intentional foul and allowing South Carolina. You want to put yourself in the position, you may get the steal, you may also get a five second count. This has been the story of the fourth quarter. South Carolina 0 for 5 from the field, eight turnovers in this quarter alone. Meanwhile, Ole Miss has 20 points here in the fourth. They scored 30 points through the first three quarters. You know, the other thing that Coach Yo was talking about on this South Carolina team and looking at who's on the floor, who do you need to foul? You want to attack, you want to go after and make sure a low free throw percentage shooter is the only option to catch the basketball. Shakira Austin has turned it up. She's got 16 points, 11 of those here in the final frame. Can she help her team complete the comeback? Hasn't been since 1983 that Ole Miss was in the SEC Tournament Championship game. They've got some work to do to get there, and they've got to do it quickly. Oh, that's a foul. Snuda Collins is getting three. And Snuda Collins to the free throw line. Camila Cardoso picks up her fourth foul. Collins a 61% free throw shooter. A lot of coaches call this floppy two sides. So Snuda Collins went away like she was going away from the basketball. And then Shakira Austin sets another screen for Snuda to come back. That gets a post switched on her. That's a good play. So three shots while the clock is stopped. Oh, you got to take advantage of those, though. This is crucial, hitting free throws. Second one will go. She's got one more coming. And South Carolina has two fouls. Doesn't look like Dawn Staley's going to use them in that last time out. I'm sure she discussed what the press break is going to be and where she wants the inbound pass to go. Collins gets one of three shots. Monk, no on the putback. Aliyah Boston with the board. Anger draws the foul. Oh, that's a missed opportunity for Ole Miss. At three freebies and you only get one. Oh, Stutter Collins misses the free throw. But Angel Baker keeps it alive. LaShonda Muck had a shot at it, just not able to finish the easy layup in the paint. It has not been a pretty quarter for South Carolina. They've been outscored 21 to 7. But they have still been able to hang on this lead. And Aaliyah Boston continues with her success at the free throw line. That's who you want there. Your leader. One of two for Boston. Time winding down on Ole Miss in Nashville.
South Carolina has been tested time and time again. They keep passing those tests. They just find a way to win. They've got that non, that no quit, refuse to lose mentality. They just fight, they battle it up because they know every opponent they face is going to bring, bring their best shot. See you on Sunday, South Carolina. Back to the SEC Tournament Championship game for the seventh time. They've never lost when they've made it to Sunday at the SEC Tournament. Like I said, is it the Don Staley Invitational? South Carolina has been very competitive. They've been on a roll this season. They dominate in the paint. They dominate defensively, and they dominate around their center, Aaliyah Boston. Look, if you enjoyed watching this Ole Miss team's fight in the fourth quarter, you're going to see them again in the NCAA tournament. They should be back there for the first time since 2007 as a number six seed. But today it is South Carolina hanging on for the win and the Gamecocks back to that SEC tournament championship game. They have won six SEC tournament titles, seeking a seventh in Nashville. We got two teams coming up next, Kentucky and Tennessee. This is going to be a battle itself. It'll be fun to see who South Carolina awaits. Aaliyah Boston with her 23rd straight double-double, and she is with Steffi. Well, yeah, you guys, you and uh, Shakira huddled up there at, uh, at half court. What did you guys talk about? Um, I just told her that she's a really good player and that good luck in the pros, and that I know she's going to do really well. What's it like going up against her? I mean, she's going to be a lottery pick. Yeah, um, she's a challenge. She's just a great player, but it's also just helping us to get better defensively. Well, Miss really came back there in the fourth quarter. What did it take to win this game? Um, us just staying patient. We had a couple turnovers at the end that um, were kind of crucial, but we were able to stick together and get through it and win the, win the game. Another double-double for you. What's the key for your consistency? I just need to be aggressive. Um, I think I actually cut going into the fourth is when I really got um, the best, and so I need to do that all throughout the game. Thank you, Aaliyah. See you in the finals. Thank you. Alyssa, to you.